Hi, welcome to my channel. So I recently had an idea to do a one take book haul. Um, is this because I do not have the time nor the energy to edit? Possibly. Is it also because I'm a procrastinator, INTP energy, Meyer Briggs, anyone? Yes, absolutely. But I took a communications class last semester and I basically did an entire speech with no cards and a time limit. So I'm pretty confident. So for starters, my name is Del. Welcome to my channel, Monty Musings. If this is just basically the musings of me, of Del. And yeah, Monty was because of the account Monte Cristo and I have a thing about classics. Let's get into it. So let's, for starters, I have four places that I've gotten books from recently. This is a cumulative between within about two months, which was my donation library bookstore, which is amazing. I love them. They're awesome. And we are on a first name basis because I am a regular and they have supported my 700 book collection. Then thrift books slash eBay, because I can't remember which one came from which, but I use both of them for getting used books. Then Barnes and Noble, then the dollar store. Interesting, but we're just, we're just gonna get, just gonna get right into it. We're going to enjoy some time together. So let's get started. First with the largest pile, which is the donation bookstore because their prices are extremely cheap and I have no self-control. Where you have the Texas, Texas connection. Off to a great start. I cannot speak today. The Texas Connection, which is about JFK, it is a New York Times bestseller, and is the only JFK assassination book that answers the most crucial question of all, who benefited the most? I have been really interested in Kennedy and his story um, politically, the story about what had happened, the tragedy, and I'm interested to see what this book can offer and what knowledge it will give me about that. This channel is not political, but we will talk about some political figures if it's in a book. Next, we have Black Sunday, which is a very interesting novel. Uh, it's basically an international terrorist organization vows revenge against the American people, a death plan without parallel. This is a fictional novel, and it says that it is soon to be a major motion picture, but this is an old copy, so it's probably not a book to movie adaption. This is probably not a book to movie adaption. I caught myself on that one. That was fun. And then we have The Falcon and the Snowman, which is a true story of friendship and espionage. Very interesting. Next, we have a book that I do not want any judgment for. It is for a project, and I'm also obsessed with the show. X-Files, Fight the Future. This is the novel based on the movie, which I recommend the movie very much. And then we have, I have to preface with this one. We have a Stephen King novel. Now, if you have ever seen the show Community, if you have not, or you have started it, or you're in season one or two, spoilers ahead, but there is an episode where Abed takes a class about Nicolas Cage, talking about the duality of Nicolas Cage, if he's a good or bad um, actor, and how basically you can't figure it out. And Abed's like, bet, I'ma do it. And it breaks him. That's how I feel about Stephen King. Stephen King is the type of author that I don't know if he's good or if he's bad. He just is Stephen King. He is the Nicolas Cage of horror and novels. He has great novels later, Joyland, Misery, The Shining. He has problematic books, It, books that were just really bad, Carrie, Colorado Kid in my opinion. And then he has books I've never heard of and I picked them up because I cannot, I can't help myself. Um, Nicholas Cage had one national treasure and I am trying to find all of Stephen King's national treasures. I said what I said. Next, we have two books by the same author, Patricia Cornwall. I have her book, The Body Farm, and my professor recommended more of her books. And this bookstore had a lot of her books, but I limited myself to two because I have a newfound sense of self-control. That's a lie, but I got All That Remains. And then I also got Cruel and Unusual. And what's really cool is that the way that the um, cover is damaged, you can see the note. 
and open it up and it just it looked pretty cool and so i got that one and then we have Anne rice writing as Anne Ra rampling for belinda i have not yet read the interview with the vampire but i keep buying Anne rice books because i feel like when the time is right her and i are really gonna be become best friends i said what i said then we have two random paperbacks that just really spoke to my soul. The Curse of the Undead. This is basically just tales of the undead by distinguished authors, which includes Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker, um, and some others. And this is basically just a collection of showing readers how vampires are portrayed and like similarities and differences. Vampires from Dracula are different from Twilight, are different from the interview of the vampire are different from Grady Hendrix books when he writes about vampires, but they all have like little similarities that connect it to the essence of a vampire. So I'm interested in that one. And then Ghost Stories from the American South. A quick review of these stories in here. Um, there are a hundred tales of horror, but it includes stories of the ghost who hated smoking and the gravestone that wouldn't stand up, mood. The ghost who goosed women, that could have multiple implications. The haunted oak that bore the image of a boy hung during the Civil War. Okay. The campus spirit who returns to haunt homecoming every weekend, every year. Homecoming weekend every year. <laughs> Can you tell I've never been to a dance? I don't even know. What is a homecoming? The woman who wanted to take her jewels to the grave and the ghost who vowed to keep them for good. Which the last one sounds like a Neil Gaiman novel and I'm very interested in that. So I got that one. Now for thrift book slash eBay, slash slash eBay. Be More Chill by Ned Vizzini. He wrote the book, It's Kind of a Funny Story, which I read this year, I read this month, and I absolutely loved it. And I'm interested in more of his novels. And Be More Chill is was turned into a musical and I got the Broadway edition, which has like the original cast and pictures from it. And then also excerpts from the people who turned the book into a Broadway show. And I got this and I knew about it. I knew about the musical because of my best friend who made me listen to the entire soundtrack. And then when I found out that the person who wrote it was now one of my recommended authors, I had to get it. And I did. The end of story. For all of my BuzzFeed Unsolved fans, Shane and Ryan, hi, how are you? Agatha Christie's first book. They did an episode on BuzzFeed Unsolved True Crime about Agatha Christie. Not about her death. Apparently she just had this really cool disappearance. You should watch it, it's really cool. And it talks about like the first book she ever wrote. And so I bought it because I am a huge Agatha Christie fan and a huge BuzzFeed Unsolved fan. Two in one. And this edition is just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Now let's talk about some classics I have recently obtained. Virginia Woolf, Mrs. Dalloway. Um, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. The person who had this book annotated it so well that they even had extra notes kept in it. And I'm so happy they didn't take them out or at least all of them out. Uh, Virginia Woolf is a very important female author of her time. She wrote A Room of One's Own and all of that. And I want to read everything that she has written and I will. Graham Greene's The Power and the Glory, a Penguin classic. Um, basically, it says in a poor remote section of southern Mexico, the red shirts have taken control, God has been outlawed, and the priests have been systematically hunted down and killed. Those two sentences were the only reason I picked up this book because that sounds super interesting. Charles Dickens' Hard Times. I lived through the pandemic. That was a hard time. But Charles Dickens probably lived through a lot more. And I'm very interested to see what this book is about. I am not going to read the back because I want to go into this blindly because I want to read more of Dickens and I know his books, Great Expectations, hoping that is one of them, but I don't want to know what they're about. I really want to go into it blindly. And then Bradbury, Classic Stories. I want to read a book by him that is not Fahrenheit 451, although that is a five out of five and a very important classic and I love it dearly. Bradbury has a lot of books that range from very different genres and I want to know more about him. And then I finally found a copy of Don Quixote. And this is a really cool copy with a beautiful broken spine. This is a massive novel. And I say massive because it also has small print. And I am going to break my fear of large novels. Not this month, 
not next month, not within the next couple of weeks, which is a month, um, not this year, 2022, that's your resolution. Break your fear of large novels, starting with this one and maybe Moby Dick, and then Les Mis. And then let's go into Barnes & Noble. So I got uh, the Mammoth Book of Jack the Ripper stories, which is just basically fictional um, stories and accounts, but it's mainly just conspiracy theories of Jack the Ripper, which I'm very interested in him as a person because he's like the most notorious unsolved case ever. And a lot of people think that it was solved, but it wasn't confirmed. And I love that about that. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Uh, this takes place in the cemetery um, in Savannah, Georgia. This is just accounts of people, of residents, people who worked here, people who have had encounters. Um, I have been here. I don't know if I was here when the statue was still up because I know they had to remove the statue due to beliefs and, and all of that. I would look into that more, but I found that really interesting. I found this near the uh, true crime section, so I'm hoping this has some stories about paranormal activity um, and maybe even crime. So, fun fact. <sighs> my most anticipated novel of this year. The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I love how I had to look at the title even though this is one of my favorite books, going to be one of my favorite books. I love Grady Hendrix so much. I have read two of his novels. I'm on to my third, which is We Sold Our Souls. This book I am reading this month, I'm reading practically any novel I can of his because I love him so much and I, I highly recommend him. He has books for every type of horror that you can think of. Vampires, exorcisms, um, one that takes place in an Ikea knockoff store which is really good and more. So yeah. And then for the dollar store I am going to rush through these because I don't want to know anything about them. I have this theory, this research question of if books at the dollar store are trash or just there by coincidence or both because I got the book Dunkirk at a dollar store and I loved it. So sometimes it, it's a hit or miss. So starting with Sirens, a novel which they clearly indicated, I'm guessing this is a thriller novel, maybe about murder, who knows. Carl Ove's Autumn, which just sounds lovely, looks lovely, and makes me feel like there's more to it that meets the eye. August Town by Kai Miller. What really got me for this one was it's the story of women haunted by women and of the dangers of both keeping secrets and saying too much, which was written by Marlon James. A Brief History of Seven Killings was his book that he wrote. That excerpt alone was enough for me to be like, I don't know what it's about, but I'm here for the ride. Then The Strange Case of Fascinations of Noah Hypnotic. The cover, the obsession with David Bowie, and this one little paragraph that says, it's a stunning surrealist portrait. It's a story about all the ways we hurt our friends without knowing it, and all the ways they stick around to save us. Say less. And I did. And I said yes to the dress. Atlas Alone, beautiful cover by Emma Newman, who won an award. So I very I believe this is sci-fi and I'm very excited for it. I haven't read a good sci-fi novel in a while. Uh, the Afterlives, the cover is beautiful. It seems very weird and very interesting and I'm here for it. The Italian Teacher, beautiful cover, maybe beautiful story. Who knows? I know that it says on the back it's a USA Today's best book of the year and it's a masterful novel about the son of a great painter striving to create his own legacy. <coughs> and that was enough for me. I just got choked up. That's just so beautiful. So beautiful. <coughs> so beautiful. Okay, last book. Oh my goodness, almost made it to the last one and I got choked up over this beautiful, del <laughs> deliciously ironic and deeply affectionate novel. And then The Mortal Word, which I kept saying world, it is not. This also is a part of a series and I did not know that. Am I gonna read the series? Probably not. Am I gonna read this book? Absolutely, because there's a dragon involved and you will learn very, very soon that I love love dragons. So that is my haul for today. 
uh, this is your first introduction to me and all that I'm about and the chaos that will ensue and the fun that we will have along the way. So I do not always buy books in like this great of majority. I usually like let it, like I buy one book a little bit at a time and then it collects. This isn't even all of them. I was too lazy to collect all of them. But next video, if you would like to see a bookshelf tour to see the types of books I am into and the books that I am anticipating reading, like my reading cart, which is my TBR, let me know down in the comments. Again, my name is Del. Welcome to my channel and I hope you've had a lot of fun and yeah, let's, let's chat, let's make acquaintances and let's have fun talking about books. So thank you so much.